it's a new neighborhood. It's not right directly to any of those neighborhoods. Uh, we think that there's some distance between those neighborhoods and ours. I wanted to point that out. Number four, it's that uh, criteria was suggesting that north and west of the main uh, routes going through Fairview would be appropriate places for planned development. That's exactly where we are. We're north and west in, in the sections of the city where those planned developments were suggested. Number seven relates to the Fairview Town Center, and we know that we're quite a distance from that. We don't think that directly applies, but it's certainly not conflicting with what we're proposing. Uh, number eight was talking about Highway 96 not becoming a long commercial strip. I think we are also trying to achieve that same goal with the residential that we're proposing. There's a commercial center that might be happen at that juncture at some point in the future, but we are working within the context of let's not make it all one commercial strip. Let's add a residential mix. Let's create some mixture of housing options and let's do it close to Highway 96 and close to the interstate. Number 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, and 14 all talk about other types of uh, land uses. And even though those aren't necessarily immediately on our site, what I want to point out is that we feel like medium density residential, as we're proposing it, allows those other types of things to happen, like your business development, like your commercial, in the right places. So if we allow for the residential occur on the, on the property where we're proposing, it works in the concert of where other things are, are needed. You know, there was a question posed to us, how do these residents benefit the city of Fairview? Well, I would say there's several ways that we're gonna benefit Fairview. For one, it's a planned development close to the highway. Um, it's gonna give you residential options that I think Fairview needs, that the surrounding county needs. And it's gonna provide housing for people that are coming looking for work and commercial development, which is there again, very much in close context on the comprehensive plan with where we're proposing our housing. Number 15 is providing new development that's well connected, built with quality material, well landscaped and buffered. And there again, I would say that's what our plan is exactly trying to do. We're exceeding buffer requirements. We've actually provided a front yard setback that exceeds what is required under the base zoning district to make sure you have room for parking your vehicles in the front of the yard. That was one thing we heard specifically noted in the last meeting. And then we are providing the amenities in the landscape as part of this development package. Number 16, uh, development at interchange that is master planned to increase connectivity. There again, we see this connectivity um, that adjoins our site. I think we're very much a part of that connectivity. What we have done is eliminated the access off Highway 96 that was on the old plan because what we want to do, if you look at that plan, is we want to create open space areas with as much vegetation as we can off Highway 96, Northwest Highway, and, um, Elrod Road, and those end up becoming buffers, if you will, between the roadway and our property. So the plan development approach has allowed us to do that. And we're now connecting with Northwest Highway in a very controlled and planned manner instead of one more access point on Highway 96. Number 17 talks about quality of architecture. Uh, DR Horton has gone back and they've revised their architecture. Uh, they've uh, really try to modernize that with more accent windows, things like uh, carriage hardware and the garage doors, things like more modern colors, uh, the bat board and batten siding. Um, and we have added a 70 foot wide lot, whereas before we had 50 and 60. So there again, we've gone back and revisited. They have looked at architecture for this site, specifically for this site in the context of Fairview and try to provide you with something they feel is an upgrade of what was there before. Number 18, 19, and 20, those relate to Bowie Park, the existing Greenway, and the process of adopting this plan. So those aren't necessarily directly applicable, but I will point out there again, I know Bowie Park is an incredible asset to the city, and we know that recreational components are an incredible asset. We're providing recreation 
right on our site as part of our plan. We're providing a natural trail system on our site as part of our plan, along with sidewalks on both sides of the street. That adds to the opportunity for recreation, that adds for the opportunity for health, for pedestrian connections. So even though we are not next to a large park or the Greenway, we're trying to incorporate those things into our master plan. Next slide, please. So here's the current site data as it stands. Uh, as you see, we now have four different types of lot, not just two. Uh, we've actually added a 70-foot lot, and we've added townhomes to the mix. And as you can see on the master plan, those townhomes are in the core of the project, and then we actually transition to larger lots in the perimeter of the project. Uh, those 70-foot lots, you know, those, the minimum on that is 70-foot by 110 deep. I want to point out that's a minimum. There's a lot of lots on our plan that far exceed that, that are up in the 10 to 15,000 square foot range. There's a lot of B and C lots that are actually uh, larger than the minimum that end up at 10,000 square feet. So it's a range, and that's what we think the POD is supposed to do, is give you a range, but we exceed the minimums um, and we provide a mixture and we are providing the larger lots in the perimeters of the project. We've also, as I said, we've added that 25 feet front setback in front of all the units because new parking was a concern, so we've exceeded the normal setback requirements in, in uh, the district. And then we've added a 50 foot um, vegetative buffer along the western property line because we believe that as we had talked about with the rural development adjoining us, it was appropriate to add more than the minimum. Uh, so that's another thing we've done. And the open space that's required under the POD is 10%. We are currently at 28%. That, as I said, includes areas for recreation, environmental sensitivity, and buffer. That does not include the sanitary sewer acreage that we've had to set aside. It does not include street right of way. So We've tried to really give you a plan that exceeds what would be typical for an open space criteria under the POD. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about the on-site sanitary system. We can get into detail on that if there's questions. We have gone through preliminary um, soils. We are in the process of going through detailed final soils analysis. We've set aside that 52 acres. We think that's enough for these home sites. That will have to be proven. We can't build anything more than what Dixon Water and the state approve under a detailed soils analysis and a very specifically designed plan. Once that plan is approved, it's adopted by the utility district. They are the ones that will have to manage it as they have done with other similar systems. So we can get into more detail on that if needed. Next slide. This is just an illustrative of the same plan. The colors kind of help depict you know, what we're proposing. You'll see the A lots that are the 70 foot wide. That's been larger than what we had in the previous plan. That's a, there's approximately 26% uh, of those. Then the, the medium B and C is the line share of the lots. And then the townhomes, we have about 17% of those in the mix. Uh, we, as I said, if you look at that plan, we've really tried to, to create some buffer around the neighborhood. We've tried to make that accessible uh, for open space and recreation purposes, but we've also been aware that the view from Highway 96 and from the major roadways uh, is gonna see a lot of natural open space between us and the houses we're proposing. And you'll see that 52 acres that's on this uh, portion of the site uh, at the lower end of the screen as I said, that has to be detailed out, and we don't know exactly how much of that 52 acres we'll need, but we will only be able to build as many homes as that can support. That's the way we're going to have to do it. There's no way around that. So that, uh, one more slide, if you would. Um, this is our new architectural palette. As you see, there's a mix of stone as well as Brick, we try to really show a more modern approach. Um, 
We're open to your feedback on this as well as, as we are to all the elements of the plan. And I'll leave it there um, with my presentation, but certainly am more than happy to answer any, any questions you have, and as will Patrick or other members of our team. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, sir. We'll open the floor if anyone has any questions. I don't have a question right now as much as I want to apologize. <clears throat> Mr. Jenkins told me that after the last meeting that you did not think any of us listened to you, but I want to assure you that I listened. So maybe I do have a comment. The townhomes, are they scattered throughout the development or are they all in one place? Thank you for acknowledging that we have dialogue. That's very important to us and we do want to acknowledge that this is a dialogue. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like Vanna White. No, come on up. <laughs> come on up, Vanna, so I can see. It did. It answered my question. Um, you know, I kind of think that I'd like to see them all in one place and the townhomes in transition into the customary home residentials for single families and have a wider street, have more streetscape in there. Mm -hmm. So it looks more like a, you know, it's a I would also like to see more brick. And is it possible to put some of the garages on the back of the house instead of having, I mean, when you said parking in the yard, I got a little worried. Um, I, I don't think well, that. Parking in the front uh, driveway. He was talking about not right. on the side yeah. porch. I, right. But is it possible that some of the entrances would be from the back so that the streets would look? <clears throat> yeah. Or just a driveway that goes around back. Yeah. If the driveway go around the back of the house or even the side of the house. We, we really haven't looked at doing an, an alley loaded product, we call that, in this community. Uh, we have built that some other places. Uh, alley load kind of on the other side of the alley, there's more alley load and it ends up being the whole neighborhood. So everyone it's sees hard, the alley. It's hard sees to the cut alley. it off. Um, <clears throat> and you actually end up, you know, driveways have to be flat. It can change the grading and also it, it, it probably doesn't make the best sense for this property, but wouldn't, it's not ruled out altogether. But. Well, I wasn't thinking as much alley as maybe the driveway going to the end of the house or the back of the house instead of just being all front door and. Okay, I see. Yeah, we don't currently have any product that looks like that. Um, that's hard to fit on a typical suburban lot. Um, so I, I don't think we have that, but we could look at different opportunities on the corner lots and maybe some of the streetscaping like you're talking about. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the corner lots, if you could just add it where you can, it would break it up a little bit, mm -hmm. even if you could do it on corner lots. Duly noted. Thank you. Is the, are the lots wide enough to do side load? Probably, probably not. Um, uh, no, not at 70 feet. Gotcha. I used to live in Western Woods, and I know there's a lot of issues there with the driveways are so shallow in most of the homes that people are just parking everywhere and that's become an issue so i just don't i don't think we want to see that well we we did hear that concern in our our last meeting with with you 
Um, so we took that from a 20 foot, and when an engineer says yard, they mean something different than what mm -hmm. gardeners like me mean. Um, a 20 foot driveway space, <laughs> we're now a minimum of 25. So all of the single family homes have at least have a two car garage and then the driveway. The townhomes have one car garage and each townhome has its own driveway. There, you know, there could be an occasional situation where somebody has a party and there's gonna be more cars, but for the people who lives in the, live in the homes, there should be enough parking at each residence. Sure, is the sidewalk intersect with the driveway and what you're considering the 25 foot setback? I wanna be sure I tell you right, that it right, so there's not, I believe. Right, the sidewalk is not included in that 25 foot. Okay. So there'd be a minimum of 20 feet from the back of the sidewalk to the garage door. 25. 25. 25. Sorry. I can't hear myself. Okay. You mentioned that some of the lots are bigger than the minimum. Do you all have, I know this really has more to do with a master plan than a zoning, but do you all have a list of the lot sizes by lot or some averages or different things other than just the minimum? We haven't developed that level of detail yet, but at some point we could certainly show you what lot square footage well, is. Certainly by construction. Yeah, and the, so we're required. Yeah, I, I know that has to be part of that master plan we approved, but I th just think I know since the zoning is um, emotional for people that it'd be nice to know how many are above the minimum for sure. We could we could do a quick analysis of that. Do a, It wouldn't be precise, but we could give you some ranges. Yeah, I just <clears throat> time and stuff, and you mentioned it, but all we can see is the minimum that it has right. to. Be. No. I, I did want to point out too. Um, I don't think I mentioned it before, but if if you look at the gross density of the project, um, we are at two point four one units per acre. Now, if you evaluate. Now here again, I understand gross density is not in the end what we're trying to measure in a planned development approach. But if you were to look at that with just a straight zoning, if you were to just take the gross acreage of the whole property uh, and look at it that way, you know, we'd be at wouldn't be tw wouldn't be ten thousand square foot lots, but it might be pretty close. The lot the lot area table is on those drawings that you gave us. We can't read the the prints, but it is on this document. <laughs> Yes, sir, it is there, and we can provide, if you need an enlargement of just that data, we'd be happy to send that to you. So what does revised plan, how many units are in the revised plan now compared to the We're old? at 604 uh, units, which net density, uh, if you take out the area for the sanitary sewer and the street right-of-ways, that puts you at about 3.4 units per acre for net density. Previous one was 611 four Correct. We were at 611 before, we're at 604 now. Yes, sir. Any additional comments? Questions? What about your average square footage of the home? Well, check me on this, but the townhomes right. are what, 14 to 2000, 1921. Okay, and single family 1600 to 3300. So, pretty wide range, especially on the single family. What were the townhomes? 14. Yeah, the end units are wider and thus larger. Any additional comments? Patrick, Kevin, I'll just I'll speak to a little bit. I'm, I'm having a hard time. Uh, falling in love with it or, or kind of seeing the vision. I think in 2006 when this was submitted 
Fairview was a little hungrier and, and hoping for growth in the new residential medium neighborhood areas that we've seen in, in the past year or two years have kind of been, you, you mentioned it has the four units per acre note, but traditionally it's been an R20 PUD that's one of the you know, appropriate zoning uses and then our PUD regulations require an underlying lot size of half the size of it. So it's R20 PUD, 10,000 square foot would be the smallest lot size. And so I just, I, I don't get the feels of kind of the picture or the vision that I've seen of, of Fairview or the, or the quality of life that that I personally uh, kind of picture long term. Um, the lot sizes, I think 7,100 being the minimum of your biggest, and there are some that are larger. The 7,100 would be some of the smallest lots. Your biggest lot would be some of the smallest lots in, in all of this, the subdivisions we have active or that we've seen recently. So it's just, I'm still having a hard time with the, with the lot size or the, the kind of overall design, just personally. Well, that's what's rolling around in my head, too. If it was about half of this size, like 300 units, you'd have bigger <coughs> pieces of property and probably less complaint from the, the town itself. You, our staff asks us all the time, what is density to you? Because it, it changes every meeting. Um, but, you know, is it the overall per, per lot or is it the feel of you look at? And I continue to go back to if I'm standing in that road and I can look around, how many lots do I see? And that's kind of how I'm going to interpret density as far as how much is compacted into, into a single area and not necessarily the overall calculation. And, and I'm torn too, we, we need affordability. We need a, some homes that, for affordability and, and smaller lot size is what helps capture that. But I just don't know, I just don't know if it gets the feels and based off the other R20s or the new residential medium neighborhood areas that we've had. It would be under an HOA. Um, it, we don't control a, a, rent, a rental base. It would be an HOA, though. I would like to say this, though, that I'm, I'm aware, being a baby boomer myself, that there are an awful lot of baby boomers out there right now who are having a terrible time finding um, the homes that suit them. And there are a lot of, of us out there that don't like mowing big yards. We don't like big yards. We like small yards or no yards. Not, we don't necessarily want to live in condos. I'm saying we, I'm throwing myself in there. But I'm just saying there are a lot of baby boomers out there who are looking for small homes in, in a nice area, but they, they want little to no maintenance. So. Um, and they, they like, you know, the small communities and the family oriented communities like Fairview is, but not everyone that lives in a country town necessarily wants a great big yard. So I just want to say that. But I don't think people want to reach outside their window and shake hands with their neighbor either as the other person sticking their hand out the window either, you know, it's so. handy if you're borrowing a cup of sugar. Well, you know, it depends on. You know, I mean, if you're in a in a walker, or if you're, you know, if if you're uh, if if you just can't walk very far, maybe, or if you enjoy gardening. We well, come up with all kinds of scenarios, but it's just very dense. So, what is the entry point, cost-wise? Well, right now <laughs> it's very very hard to talk about what prices will be in Nashville two or three years from now when we're selling homes, but. These homes, similar homes and communities where we're selling them now are mid 300s up into the 400s. Do you have, so the, are any of those communities in Williamson County? We don't have anything currently selling in Williamson County. We'd love to change that. So are these, I know before when you came, the, the, houses that you were showing us were not the houses you were planning to build in the subdivision. So are these the houses? Is this what your concept these, plan is for the houses? Yeah, these renderings have been done for this community. Um, and, and I will add, thank you for your feedback last time. I can't say it was fun, but it did cause us to really take a hard look at our product. And I believe we've made it much better uh, with a variety of siding, variety of windows. Um, we will look at doing more, more brick varied with, you know, you have a hardy plank house, a house with more, more brick, one with less so that they look different as you progress down the street. 
Um, but uh, we've done a little more with roof planes, porches, and um, essentially the same floor plans of the homes that we showed on our earlier submission, but um, done enrich the elevations quite a bit. So, Can you identify or, or give us a guess to how many of these uh, single family homes are one story? That, you know, that's gonna be a marketing decision. We do have um, probably four to five one story plans, but of course that's gonna depend on the sales, what people want as we open it up, but we will, we will have one stories available. Yeah, I see, see some in your drawings, but I just didn't know if you had already yeah. uh, calculated out what percentage. No, we, we haven't programmed each lot for each floor plan at this point. That, that won't happen until we're actually selling homes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hunter. Would you mind, uh, sorry, would you mind clarifying really quick what the proposed zoning is? Because it seems like they're just clerical errors. Um, on the first page or the second page of your presentation, it says RM8 is the proposed zoning. And then later on, on image or drawing C 2.0, it also states RM8. So are those just clerical errors? Or should it be RS8, Pod? No, we, we are coming in under the current, what we understand to be the current base zoning district, RM8. Okay. With a PUD, we are coming in with RM8 with a POD. That's our is request. Okay, and then this is different from two or three months ago when we first heard this, correct? We've, we've, add, um, we've added the townhomes with the understanding that you wanted some mix, mm -hmm. and that that is what we're asking for now. I mean, I think that's a, that's a discussion we're willing to have, too. If there's, I'm kind of hearing some, you know, what we heard was front yards, make sure there's enough room to park, elevations of the architecture, how does the open space working, um, we responded to those. Now I'm kind of hearing some discussion on density. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, we also heard a lot of discussion about how does this fit with a comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. And agree or not, we tried to very closely look at it through that lens to tell you why we think that's the case. Now, um, saying that we have to come back with a 300 unit plan, I don't, I can't speak for sure, but I don't think it works quite honestly. So I'm looking to see if there's a, you know, is the, I think the last plan that was approved had 540. Is there a number there that is more comfortable? And I'm not agreeing to any of that. I'm up here as a planner just looking for some honest feedback. And, you know, do the townhomes, um, adding that residential component along with the 70 foot lots, is that a need that um, the city sees as a legitimate need? Okay, so just to be clear, to sum everything up, Current zoning is RM8 with pod. Um, a couple months ago, whenever you first came in, you had proposed a development as RS8 with pod, and then you went back and made some revisions and decided not to rezone to RS8 and instead to keep the RM8 zoning. Correct. Thank you. I think it needs to be stated that I'm not on the developer side, but if you go to four and a half units per acre, you, you decrease the density, but you increase the cost of development and the cost of the product. So uh, people need to put in their mind, are you trying to find more affordable housing? And what do you have to sacrifice for that? And so- uh, we're, we're trying to provide a range of housing. Part of that is making sure that some of it's affordable for uh, the type of development we've seen Fairview is anticipating in your business development area and in, on that commercial highway. We're trying to give you, we added higher end product and we act added a, a you know a more affordable product as well um i don't know if you want to speak to any more patrick but we're we're trying to give you a range you know as as patrick pointed out the sizes of the houses there's quite a bit of range there because we think residential options are a positive thing we heard we didn't want all the same single family house up and down the street did that answer your question, Mr. Anderson? Um, I can't speak for everybody. I can see some changes that y'all made. Um, I guess I had hoped there would be some, in exchange for the townhouses, some actually like a minimum lot size for something of 10,000 because that really is what I guess I read in the 2040 plan 
Um, but the only reason, I think we said all a mixture because of the pod designation, that if you're gonna ask for that, that it needs to be a strong mixture. Um, but with that, I thought that maybe you would choose to concentrate the townhomes in one area closer up to 96 or in an entrance where it made more sense closer to higher density areas and then back off and gradually become greater and greater lot sizes to more meet the other areas that it was because it's a very wide development right um the area to the south just when you look at the plan you seems a lot plan, like less dense and a lot more kind of that community route there's parks kind of inside the home loops um on the north side where all the townhomes are it seems like if you had a park or something right in the center of all that people wouldn't just be looking at houses upon houses and not sure how to get home at night if they've been drinking. Um, it just seems like a <laughs> lot of streets uh, right. <laughs> right in there. So I'll tell you the reason for what we did, and we're, we're open to some of the suggestions you're making. We, we wanted to, um, I think we wanted to make sure that those townhomes had pretty good access to kind of the heart of the community, if you will. We wanted those to be kind of wrapped by other types of product, but if, there's a jet if we hear that it would be better to maybe cluster all of them closer you know to the to the north closer to the highway 96 i think that's something we're very open to um if we were to add a 10,000 square foot lot product to the mix is that start to be a game changer um i'm not saying that would be the whole development would be that it would just be adding one more component here again i'm looking for some direction that might get us you know to a place for you more i did read that into the 2040 plan a little bit more i think i mentioned it last time and i did not hear from y'all that y'all were really interested in producing that um, i can't say i'm surprised that it didn't come back with a minimum lot size but um, i kind of thought that mm -hmm. was some of the possible trade-off of having some of the more dense up front right. was to get at we, least a quarter acre lots in the back we can we can definitely look at like I said some of these lots are um, exceed ten thousand. Right, I did, and now right. I can zoom in on this table now that I right. found it because there's two presentations that were sent to us, so I was trying to flip between the two. Yeah. Maybe we add, you know add a different we add you know one more lot designation in the mix, and um, if we you know add some more of that ten thousand. Um, I think we're, like I said, we're looking for. But I'd love to see some space added between the home, like instead of just on the outside, like space where you're not really just looking at your neighbor. Yeah, I mean, we we could we could start to look at some pocket parks within the block systems, so that each you know some of those higher density areas have a pocket park included. You can know like the 5,000 square foot lot size is is called out as our town center area. So like our smallest lot size in a, is a 5,000 square foot is, is in our suburbs mentioned in our highest impact, highest density area. And so over 50% of this project is right close to that size outside kind of on a more rural. I know we're getting closer to the interchange, but uh, you've got an, in our 40 proposed development across the street and our 20, it just, it, we're pushing more towards a lot size that would be more for the higher congested interior feel of, of a town center or so, in my opinion. I agree with that. It certainly says you had six ten or six four to total houses. Six oh four. Six oh four. Six hundred and four, yes sir. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't believe if you went down to five eighty you would be able to get enough spread on what what they're you're they're talking about here too I mean you can get every time you take a house out you get the equivalent of a little uh, neighborhood lot or two but uh, to get to get it to feel more like uh, all uh, Stevens Glen or whatever that's called you got to take out a lot of houses and uh, uh, I think what we could do would be like we talked about the pocket parks um, so that at least there's a sense of 
some open space in within the blocks. To start to go to a really wide lot, I think um, that would be difficult to achieve what, what we're trying to do both with not only the density, but I think quite honestly, uh, you know, the type of neighborhood we're developing is was mentioned, we're not looking for really huge yards. We're looking for... Right. Uh, uh, one more thing that would be, because uh, they are pretty well tightened up together, so if, like you said, if someone had a party or a uh, Super Bowl party or whatever, there's going to be a difficulty in parking. Uh, so if there was some uh, uh, off-site or off-parking areas scattered throughout there for uh, uh, non-residents parking, it would help. Okay, so pocket parks, off street parking, <coughs> pop, possibly adding a designated lot in there that's the closer to the 10. I agree. I think that putting those townhomes together uh, would probably look better and trying to get a little bit better of a flow. Um, it's, it's good to have a mix of all different types and sizes of lots and homes, but I think to have it just kind of flow from one size and then let it flow on down or up at, you know, however, I, you know, I think it would look better and I think it would just, you know, it'd have a better feel to it rather than townhomes right in the middle. I think maybe putting those townhomes up there on the north end towards Highway 96 might be a good idea mm -hmm. if it'll work. One of the things we need to make sure to do, and we're, we're hearing you in the townhomes clustering those closer to Highway 96, but we also want to make sure that it's, each phase is done, that you're getting a mixture of your unit types and your products. And That's what I was going to say. Some of that decision was so that we have townhomes throughout at least half of the duration of the project, okay. but um, that's just more of a marketing and sales. I also want to point out, and I don't know for sure, but we would need to look really hard at the topography of that area around 96, that is a pretty steep drop in that area. Mm -hmm. So that might not be right. the most pragmatic place. Yeah, to I guess what I'm homes, but right. Um, Point well taken. So, but but we should look at that. And then more brick. <laughs> Any additional questions? Or comments? I, I do want to mention, you know, our intent is to come back here next month, going through this process one more time, to bring you a plan that you can approve. I know you're not ready to do that tonight, but we want to continue to work with you. You're again processing what we've heard. Um, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying don't come back. Um, no, we didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just. I, th I think your question is more don't come back with this plan come and, back with and not necessarily come back correct. if you could elaborate on your on your question. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you very much for your input and thank you. Need to work to achieve a plan that's successful. Thank, thank you very much. We thank you, Kevin. It. 20 minutes, Micah, do you, do you guys do you want to jump into that discussion real quick? I think we're going to hold off on the open and improved recreation space until January. That way we have a little bit more time to discuss that. We've had several big discussions tonight uh, with this and then several things that go along with just pods in general that we've discussed because of this project. So uh, rather than wrapping too much up, I think let staff get together uh, bring something out January for for that and I think it, it may even be a mixed workshop for that one do we want to field some questions from the audience thank you uh, my name is Jeff Pape I live at 7114 L Rod Road right in the corner, um, uh, point to it, but uh, directly adjacent to the property. Um, just wanted to cover a few things. Um, obviously, DR Horton hosted a, a little bit of an open house before this. I know a few people were here and listened. Some people didn't. Um, there was significant concern among the citizens that this, this um, is still not quite dense enough. Um, 
Kevin and I will agree to disagree on some things. Um, first of all, relative to the zoning, there's been all kinds of email traffic as well. You know, my position, and I think it was clarified by your Mr. Collins, correct? Scott. Scott, yes, yeah, sorry, Scott. Um, this morning that, you know, this is a rezoning application, and therefore, in, in your words, the previous zoning is irrelevant. Um, it's whether this application stands on its own merits. So um, then you start looking at the, at the comprehensive plan as one thing. You've got to look at the comprehensive plan and the zoning, of course. And with the comprehensive plan, Kevin did his job, and he did a great job of, of pointing out how this plan can fit in to a lot of the components of the master plan. But when you look at new medium residential, it's the biggest list of potential uses. So RM8 isn't actually on the list. There is a zoning code that says new district that would permit traditional neighborhood development, but the actually appropriate zonings listed are R40 and R20 PUD. Um, the R8, um, RM8 PUDs are listed only in the high um, density zonings. And this, this designation of the new residential medium gives you every option as a city to approve anything from those smaller zones and, and the clusters all the way up to you know, R40. You guys can do essentially what you want. Um, and, and one area I completely agree on is that a, a POD is absolutely appropriate for this kind of property. You, know, you have two options with zoning. You have a straight zone and you have POD. Um, this is a 251 acre site that is literally a mile long. It's the, the back of the site at the very south edge is a mile away from Route 96. So if you were to try to apply a um, straight zone to that, you know, the zoning that's appropriate right up against 96 is absolutely not appropriate in the back. Um, the, the two handouts I gave you is the first one just shows the surrounding zoning because in the plans that they did, they left all the county stuff blank. And so my plan, sorry, my plan fills in the county zoning as well. And you look at the percentages at the bottom, um, and, and if you add up the five acre minimum and the one acre minimum lots, basically um, roughly 90% of the perimeter of the site are surrounded by at least 40,000 um, square foot lots or 210,000 square foot lots with five acre minimum. And I think that has to inform the decision. Um, the second handout is the suggested plan. Um, I, th I think the PUD is the right, uh, I'm sorry, POD now, is the right thing to do. I just think it doesn't go far enough. It doesn't have enough mix of uses. Um, the, the plan I put together has the more intense uses like they have now up near 96. And also, obviously, Northwest Highway has been designated as a collector road. So that should be another higher density area. But then when you look at where you're adjacent to five acre minimum lots and R40, it should be bigger lots. It should be R40 lots. It should be, you know, in some cases, one to two acres. Um, Kevin, in either his presentation or in, in his uh, email this morning, um, talked about this as transitional zoning. And if you kind of break this down, the, the whole point of a POD is to break it down into components. And, and with a POD, you don't have to just pick one underlying zoning. You can put RM8 up front. You can put R40 in the back. You can put R20 in the middle. And you can have all those underlying zonings and, and have all those different components. That's what a POD is for. You guys ever, have every right to ask for that if you think it's appropriate with the community. And so if you just kind of look at the property south of Elrod, which is the, the darker blue. So if you talk about transitional zoning, on the east side of that, it's all R40. On the west side, it's all five acre minimum lots. So it, it seems like there's no common sense to say that the transitional zoning between R40 and, MA, and, and uh, the, the five acre minimum should be 15,000 square foot lots. To me, the definition of transition is somewhere between the two. So you're going from 40,000 to 210,000. So those lots should be transitioned somewhere in between the two. Same thing if you come over hey, to- Mr. Pape, just, just for clarity, that is municipal growth area. So that, that area around that perimeter is municipal growth area. So it's designated for future annexation, future future right. development. So it's okay. not a rural preservation five acre lot area. Right. So just but for you, clarity but, to ensure that, you know, that's right. that's kind of the vision of the bigger picture. Those areas have been identified by the county or by the city as future growth areas. Right. But they're not designated for RM8, correct? No, that's right, but I'm just saying that right. they're not RP5, rural preservation that will never be, that they're kind of no, no, no. future. No, they're, the, I mean, the designation now is, is MGA5. Yeah. Municipal growth area. Right, right. municipal growth, absolutely. But I think we understand how a pod works. I think everything that, that I yeah. want to make sure we wrap up and give other people time, too, to talk if we're going to have it open. So. 
Fair enough. Um, well, I would ask that you guys consider the, the plan that I have presented and ask them for much bigger lots in the back. Because again, the transitional piece, it makes no sense to transition from a 40,000 square foot lot to 210, or even call it 40, call it R40, to transition from R40 to R40 with 10,000 or 15,000 square foot lots. So. Can I ask you, tell me your name again. I'm sorry, it's Jeff. And your last name? Pape, P-A-P-E. And your address? 7114 Elrod Road. And it's, I'll point to it. That's okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babe. Anyone else have any questions or want to say anything? Could state your name and address for me, please. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Larson, 7108 Elrod Road. I've lived this plan that's been up here right now with basically almost a zero lot line. And we're talking about driveways and the uh, uh, exterior brick. We used to joke where I came from that you could pass an egg around the street and it wouldn't even break. That's how close we were together. We had 20 homes on one acre lots. Um, it's just not, uh, it, it's, it's the density, but you could, a neighbor could turn a light on and the light comes in your house. A neighbor could be out back having a smoke, you're getting the smoke in your house. There's no quality of life in that amount of density. And on top of that, that's just one development in that area. There's, there's the uh, R40, which everybody's on an acre lot, but that still is gonna add to the 604 homes there. So if you had 600 homes and four people in each home, that's 2,400 people in that small area. And in, in, in that, you have take a two uh, family income. In those homes, there's two cars minimum. So we're looking at 1,200 cars just on the streets from that one development going through that whole area. So my concern basically is density. That's my only concern about that whole area. And, and I think, um, you know, Looking on the map there, we have a lot of the, the uh, beige areas, but all up and down the uh, 96, I believe that is, and then we just have the one high area, high density area. I think that could be spread out. That's thank my you. only comment. So thank you. Thank you, sir. A few more minutes before we take a break for the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Lisa Larson, 7108 Elrod. Like my husband, we grew up in farm area of Orange County, California. We lived this. It was farmland, the whole area that we grew up in. We watched it grow over 35 years. And seeing, being a child and watching it, we saw roads built everywhere before the homes came. Here we just see homes being built with no roads being adjusted. Um, Northwest Highway, I feel like I'm paying chicken every time I drive down that road. And they're gonna put, you know, however many cars on that road. There's no um, roads or adjustments being built to that road right now. There, there's, in, in this, there's lots of plans for, for that But the road. homes are going first, and how long do we wait for the road to be widened without having to touch mirrors as you go by? Commissioner I'm Brother, concerned that, about that. that. That assertion is incorrect. There, there's a plan that's already been nego negotiated with this developer and other developers in the area to expand and widen the road prior to the construction of the subdivision. Prior to. Phases. That's correct. But we've not seen any movement on that yet at all. You haven't. The staff okay. certainly has. Well, yeah. Well, I'm talking as a, a homeowner here. I, I have not seen anything. So I'm concerned with that. Right. I'm concerned with but it. My report back to you is that the city is addressing that issue okay. prior to the construction. Okay. Um, it sounds like we're also, you know, looking at um, functionality versus, um, or aesthetics versus functionality. I'm not really concerned about the elevation and what it looks like. I'm worried about, you know, when everyone comes home and turns their washer and dryer on and baths and showers and all that stuff. All that water is going to go somewhere. I don't know if the plan is going to support that. That's a concern of mine. Just, just in fairness, we're not necessarily engineers designing that, so there'll right. be professional but it's, it's a concern. Like that, right? Um, and, and there's there's things in place to try and prevent okay. that, and, and the you know minimum qualities right. or standards that you have to follow through. So. But I am voicing much my concerns. Yeah, I don't have I'm all the answers you. for yes, it, so that's yes, why. Um, 
also, it depends on what your target market is. Are you looking for senior facilities, or are you looking for you know new families to move into these these uh, communities? Because if your target is to be elderly or senior citizen areas, you're not going to be buying a two-story house. People in walkers are not going up downstairs. So it depends on what your target is. I appreciate That's the elderly because I work with them, but I appreciate that. But they're not going up and downstairs. Also, with elderly and hospitals, I'm worried about the infrastructure. Dumping all these people into the community without hospitals and a more controlled growth, where does the, you know, the, the community get their health services? Doctors aren't even taking new patients because they're overcrowded. I'm just worried about the mass growth without proper infrastructure. I'm all for growth. I want new restaurants. I love Thompson's Kitchen, but I want to have slow growth that is manageable and has the, the communities to, to support the growth. So just, I want to slow it down and make sure we have uh, infrastructure to support it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Got a few minutes. We're going to take a break before. I'm Tammy Hyler Pape. I live at 7114 Elrod Road. And I built my place there in 1999. So I've been here a while. I would just like to plead with this board to please. Please, don't just consider more brick, a little bit bigger driveways, but this monster of a dense, just a really, really dense development right in the middle of this oddly <laughs> zoned farmland. <laughs> I know it's supposed to grow. We like growth. I'm not against this development if it was the right kind of development and the um, smartly transitional development that that piece of property should be. I'm just pleading with you that you all really, really take this to heart and say, would you want 611 or 604 homes right next to your, well, at your fence line? Would you want 52 acres of a new septic system that hasn't been proved with a lifespan that's been admitted in here more than once tonight, would you want 52 acres of a septic system next to you? That's all I want you to consider when you think about this piece of property and this development going on there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I know that you're trying to close things down really quickly, so may I add just a few final comments? Sure. Um, according to the 2040 comprehensive plan on page 57, we have a Fairview Forward vision statement. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll read the opening sentence and then one line in the middle. So the city of Fairview is a rural community that cherishes its small town character and is committed to preserving and enhancing that character through balanced, responsible growth. And then later on, it says that part of that responsible growth in Fairview is sensitive to natural features and the environment. Also, earlier on in page 15 of the document, there's a section on general character, and it said community stakeholders have reiterated their desire to ensure that the comprehensive plan retains Fairview's rural character. In general, the rural nature of the community is defined through the surrounding rolling landscape, low density housing, and slower pace of life. And it goes on adding more detail. I don't see how an RM8 pod development in a medium density location, according to our 2040 plan, is at all appropriate. That's it. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Yes, no, it's just a reminder, when we start the regular meeting, just a reminder to all the members, make sure you lower your microphone and speak into the microphone. When we're on the record for, for um, matters that will be before the Planning Commission, just make sure we can clearly hear that. Yeah. So just as a reminder for that. Other than that, sir, nothing. Thank you, sir. We'll take a five-minute break. We'll start at 7.